Hi there, I'm Seamus. And I'm Josh. I'm Ritzgarn. And I'm Chris. And we're playing Dishonored! Press any key! Dishonored! That screen needs to be there. Every, every game review website's favorite game to pull up and say, This is the game that's important this year that you should be playing. And then a few weeks later to go, You know, it's, it's actually not great. It was the game that had it that distinction the... until Far Cry 3 came out. Right, yeah. <laughs> Look at the Gamma Slider. Slider! This game makes a very Cause... strong impression, and then it let, and then you realize after you're finished, or even while you're playing it, that there's something missing from the experience. I can't even remember the last time a game prompted me for a Gamma Slider while starting a new game. Thief? The Thief, I think? Yeah. Yeah. Like 10 Which is years misleading. Ago. Amnesia, because I guess. You think that the reason it's asking for a gamma slider is so that you can see the perceive the shadows as the guards would, and you know use stealth. But the thing is, you know, somewhat reasonably, Corvo, shadows actually have very little to do with stealth in this game. The shadows do nothing in this game. Which, no which is really strange. I'm hoping someday right we'll get, like, computers will have enough horsepower that they'd be able to, like, somehow calculate shadows so that guards so wouldn't be able to see you if you're in the dark. Cure. I mean, that's you my dream. Me. You know, this well, is I far, remember far future. I, I rem someday. It's great, by the way, that we're going off on a tangent Emily right now at the very the start, but I remember seeing show. some pre-release stuff and I they know. actually said and that, like, that was a cognizant choice that they didn't want you to just be hiding in shadows. They wanted it to all be field of view of the guard. So, already we have a microcosm of what's uninspiring about this game's writing. Which is, oh, boy. The big Here thing is... You love the Empress, and she gets assassinated, and everybody hates you, and there's the twin betrayal of, they killed the person I love, and everyone hates me now. But, the way it tells us that the we love the Empress is, it, it tells us that we love the Empress. Like, the Empress is just like, please come home, and then we get five seconds of talking to her, and then, spoiler warning, she gets assassinated. <laughs> like, they yeah, just need uh, a giant flashing message at the bottom. You care about this person while she's being stabbed. Seriously. Uh, isn't this sad? This is the saddest thing. Flashing in giant text. We need help with the rat. Well, I mean, this isn't the first game to do this. It isn't even the first game to do this no. that we've played. Uh, Deus Ex did this. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, that's Lake what I was going to say. Um, this, especially with Deus Ex, this intro is up. so... This intro is so similar in its in its misplaced tone to Deus Ex's Human Revolutions, um, not not the first game. Yeah. Uh, well, the in that it shows you this person you're supposed to care about, but you don't know, and then it gets rid of them, and then it makes the whole thrust get revenge or something. I get. Yeah, although you don't Deus care Ex about them, so it's kind of difficult to feel connected at all. It was somewhat confused with... Um, sorry, I'm going to move back to the, what's happening right now. So this elevator is another good example of this game, which is how this game does things. It creates a set piece that's very interesting and makes you think about how this world works, and it's really cool. And you can just imagine a bunch of people sitting in a room going, Man, won't this be interesting? Yeah, it should be like a thing that lifts the boat. And then you get off it and something boring happens and someone talks to you. Okay! I think that's the fastest I've failed yet. <laughs> what? What the? You committed. Wait. You committed a capital <laughs> offense. You can be executed I, for bumping into the I jumped over a dude's. I, I jumped on a dude's head. <laughs> <laughs> so awesome. okay, that's game. the season. Great. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for watching. <laughs> yeah, I discovered that pretty. I was dicking around here. I, I was actually talking to Seamus on vent when I discovered this, I think. Or maybe it was after I discovered this that I was talking to him. I don't remember. But it, <laughs> I was dicking around so in this, this is, room, started jumping around, actually, and landed on someone. So what we're, it's actually going to happen is, they're going to take like four minutes to introduce every character that's, a, that's significantly ah. important in the narrative. And such is the skill and deftness with which they did this that later when I met these people again, I was like, did, 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 I, did I know this guy? 
Hey oh, guys, it's is... some kid this that's not dead. Um, it is so perfunctory, as I think these introductions. Now, I've said on my own, this I game would have been much that. stronger if there was a mission Let's between this and the betrayal. Sequence, you guys. I agree, yeah. Seamus. Home, yeah, Lord. we needed one mission where we needed to do a mission Stop where the the Empress you was alive well and we could settle into the role of being her protector. Like if they came for her right. and we defended her and escorted her to safety and then time. after that My mission the betrayal the happened, the you know, we think we're escorting her to safety and the person we're giving her to turns around and kills her. Something like that. The way this was done was just so oh, cool painting. It, it was. It felt this. like the writers were just in such a hurry to get started. Well, let I me mean, say, go ahead. Uh, let me just say the nice thing about the game. Um, but we're going to be dumping on the story a lot and how it's handled uh, along the series. This art direction in this game is actually one of my favorites, I think. And I really wish it had a more engaging, like a more inspiring game attached to it. But I really I like totally how the colors agree. work. Yeah. Looks like a painting, but it doesn't look painterly, if that makes sense. Oh, shit. Josh, just run away. Run, run away as far as you can and lose the hide-and-seek game by, by by proxy of running away too far. Okay, oh, you know what? I didn't even try. I literally went to the other side of the bridge and just crouched, like, Did I win? behind a pillar. That is not at all what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> but it is oh, man. Got. Corvo, Somersault Champion, oh, 2013. Oh, great this. But, I mean, one of the things that, that, that we were talking about was how perfunctory the introductions... Oh, wow, we went back far. Uh, how perfunctory <laughs> yeah, the introductions are. I was expecting are. the... Will you tell me about your trip, please? Um, and I, I just... Even in, even in other games that did this sort of you are in love with this person, up they're gone thing, with Alice in, in Alan Wake, we had that time on the boat and we got to have a conversation with her and then her backstory yeah. got filled in a little bit with flashbacks and like how their marriage got on the rocks when uh, Alan became a famous writer who was drinking too much and partying too hard and even in <laughs> Deus Ex where we really didn't get much we had the whole backstory with their dog and, and people connect with animals real strongly and I think you had like the fact that your dog got put down and they bring that back at least gave you some emotional connection to the fact that your relationship with uh, Rachel ended and you had one level of being a human before they made you into a robot. You had at least one, you had at least the tutorial before the betrayal. And here it, it really is, we will go meet her and the first thing we do with this woman is watch her get killed. That is our first meeting with her. Yep. I think it's especially hilarious how oh, people are I mean, talking, spoilers. like debating. People are debating whether or not, like, Corvo and the Empress had an affair and, like, the child is his. I'm just saying, it, if oh. the writers were trying to suggest that, then they understand <laughs> what signifies love about as well as old Greg. No, they did. They they pretty clearly make it clear in some of the text that it's it's likely her, likely your kid. Right. That is, that's enough. Of you <laughs> really kid. think you I'm sure you won't there? be important later, and certainly not the major MacGuffin of the entire game or anything like that. Well, that's the problem Although, with her as a character, is she's a MacGuffin, not a character. I'll give her... And I feel... I, I don't want to be so oh, negative at the beginning. Shit. I agree with everything we've said. You steal the wine. But there's um, also a lot good to say about this game. That I, yes, I, but... I, what are you doing? It's, the, the problem it starts is, off poorly. It Yeah, it has an awkward wants. introduction. And you don't get to the good stuff until a little bit later when it starts... It's been good actually touching people, on oh. themes and, and talking about stuff. This introduction, it really it's does, like, they're just like, yeah, 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 whatever, let's get to it. Well, that, and that's yeah. what's sort of oxymoronic about it, is that it, it's not a bad intro, because, well, it is a bad intro, but when you're not jumping off cliffs and intentionally bouncing on people's heads and getting game overs, <laughs> it lasts only about five minutes, and then you're jumping straight into the better part, which is the core gameplay, whereas here we're screwing around. I guess maybe I should take things yeah. slightly more seriously than I have been. Well, really, the fact that you're 
you cool, were goofing cool. around actually gave us more time to talk about this because this is so <laughs> short we did not even have time to give even a quick analysis of it. Like this guy. Oh, that you guy's to totally not guy, evil. Oh, Jesus. Definitely not. No. I forgot how, this, how overt that was. Okay, that's Palpatine, the, that's the you have a good day. I'm gonna talk to yeah. the Empress is totally not about to get killed. It's a fair wind the guy whose head looks like a skull. Spoiler warning, that guy might be a bad guy. So, they made the rather curious and altogether incorrect choice of making Corvo an entirely silent protagonist. I hope that one of the other cities this uh, causes yeah. so many problems in this game. This yes, very bad. there's two problems the with conversations you have with NPCs that fail to characterize them, as we'll get into, and watch for this in future episodes. The first is that they you don't say anything back to them, so you don't give them anything to work with, they're just monologuing. The second is... When they talk to you, they generally have their arms folded, like she did, they raise one hand occasionally, and they speak uniformly in a tone like they're explaining to you where the Christmas tree is in their attic. Oh, fuck ninjas. Is I don't think there's like a sense? single good voice actor in this entire game. Okay, I need to... Uh, Samuel the Boatman. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I love me some Samuel yeah. the Boatman. Uh, 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 what's his name? Um... Uh, science guy. Not Bill no, Nye. No, like, he, he may be a good oh, actor, Brad Dourif. but he gives a oh, terrible yeah, Brad Dourif. performance. Brad Dourif. He gives a terrible I performance. I, I, you know what? We'll get into that when we meet him, but I think a lot of that has well, more to do with Well, I'm the best bodyguard our... in the entire land, which is apparently not very good. Ooh, that's this cool. is my favorite power in the game. Hold people up and keep them. Yeah, stay yeah. I was country. waiting for that power. It doesn't happen. Find Emily. That's <laughs> not a thing. It's like none of these powers this. they have exist in the game except blink. So she's dead. The she's. she's <laughs> out here. That the, dude the just spawned zone. up. Did you see that? In the corner, yes. he <laughs> yes. just appeared. So also, they... I really love the expression on her face. Didn't that just scream? Everything I've ever wanted <laughs> is being taken away from me, and I'm dying without knowing that my daughter will be safe. Wait, 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 wait. Or did wait, wait. it like, shoot him so hot? You changed the like FOV, accused... didn't you, Judd? Yes, he did. Yeah. Well, okay. So. Originally, the game had a rather curious FOV slider. It shipped with an FOV slider, which is good, but it went from 60 to 85, which was just high enough to, for me to notice and be incredibly annoyed by. I also like how you're no longer being affected by the magic power. It's you against two guardsmen, and you've got all of your swords and weapons, and he just punches you in the head, and you die, and you fall unconscious. <laughs> right. Let's see how that happens in later combats in this game. I, I so, like, but my favorite part of that whole thing was the guy came in and accused you of kidnapping Emily when she wasn't there. What, did we eat her? <laughs> yeah. No, no, he's, he's, the, 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 the warden he's is in, in with the Lord yeah. Regent. I know so he's in on it. So why couldn't we right. just murder all of them, then? Yeah, but he's in on it, so why is he putting up this pretense that we, why doesn't he just say, I'm the bad guy and I'm here and... Our plan has worked perfectly, and we're going to blame it on you. Who is he pretending for? Since everyone the there must be in on it. Are the soldiers okay. that dumb that they believe that you kidnapped Emily and put her in your pocket? Oh, they're probably in on it, too. We got the guards to go away. Um, but anyway... Yeah, the um, guards in this game are evil. What, like, all he needed to do was hand him, like, ten bucks and say, Hey, go punch Corvo in the fucking face. And the guy's like, won't he just skewer me? And he's like, no, it's cool. It's the first five minutes of the game, and everything is contrived. At the right time. And someone... Oh, so, so here we're being tortured. This, this again, you should be feeling anger here. Like, oh, I'm gonna get these guys back, and this seems yeah, but like... Yeah, all you're feeling I, is like, what the fuck just you happened? Know, I don't even know what you're talking about. Who are you? What is this? Who is that who died? Who is that girl that got taken? I don't... I don't we know. seem to be in an awful hurry here. And then, and then, hey, we're getting breaking <laughs> out, breaking out of prison already. Okay, well, that took all you know of... What? Two minutes. You know what this kind of feels like? Is you're not Corvo Atano, your actual name is like Carl Atano, and you just walk <laughs> in, like, to deliver a letter, and the Empress, like, took it from you, and you're like, oh, no, I I'm not, what? 
I don't know what's going on. I don't know any of these people. I've been arrested. This is a bad day. Except this is like two months later. Or six months later, <laughs> some obscene amount. You okay, really so. don't feel the loss that... I mean, the whole... The, the thing is called Dishonored. The whole point of the story is that Corvo goes from, you know, high place in society, you know, honored bodyguard to the Empress, to escaped prisoner and lowest rung of society, and it happens for the player in the span of literally about three minutes. And it is not enough yeah. time, especially since we never see his face, he never Wait, complains Josh. about it. Could you assassinate that guy through the bars? Because the prompt was, oh, like, showing up. Let's see. Oh, oh well, now the bars are open. Alright, we'll put you in here. So... Like in Deus Ex, so you've got two options, which is lethal and non-lethal. Yep. Unlike in Deus Ex, they're, they work differently in practice. Because non-lethal takes like five seconds. Yeah, I like that a little better. That lethal is more expedient. Um, and I mean, I, I like it because it reminds me of Thief, which this game tries hard in many ways to be Thief, and it copies a lot of mechanics from Thief, just not quite as well as Thief did them. But we haven't had a Thief game in ages, so this is good. I feel like I'll this is also one get. of the only areas in the game where shadow play is a real part at all. Yeah, but I mean, okay, I I was actually kind of pissed off with this game because this is really dark in here. Um, and I felt like the game needed a flashlight because there are certain areas in here whoop, that are uh, that are really, really dark and you need to go and do stuff and you can't see. But then you get out of here and there's and it, nothing, it never shows up again. Nothing's ever this dark later on. Yeah. It's true. Um, except for one other level. Um, so, I don't know. Gosh. What's your explanation? Like, so what's your mode? Your modus here? Because, you know, there's no one around. I don't know. I slit that guy's throat. I haven't, I haven't figured it out yet. Uh, I'm Reginald Cuffedbird. I mean, come on. <laughs> um, oh, hey, we've got the uh, the Mirror's Edge red parkour stuff here. It's, it's not actually a thing, that's just these are painted red for whatever reason. Like I was saying about Th Thief earlier, I mean, I loved the crap out of Thief. It was one of my all-time favorite games, especially the first two, I thought were amazing. And we don't get many titles like that, where it really dedicates. And so, this is the closest we've come in... I don't know, how long's it been since Thief 3? Has it been like eight years? since we had a game and like honestly, this. And also, Thief 3 stepped back in a lot of ways. It was. Even Thief 3 was a step back from the earlier games as far as depth. 2004, so it's been nine years. Wow. So that's a long time to go, waiting for another stealth game. So we get this, and... I mean, I appreciated the fact that we're getting a little bit of these really stealth first person sneaking around knocking out starts no i no. missed it so here's another thing they haven't really established yet was, like uh, this game spends a lot of fucking, fucking time with its world in this place like it's 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 world building is occasionally it almost kind of feels like the dm in Seamus's dm of the rings i mean there are elements of it are the cool and we'll get into what's what works and what doesn't later yeah there but are some this really game, cool things in here this game but, yeah. goes into a lot of detail about how its world is sort of built up, and right now it's not really clear. Like, it, yeah, it gives they... you a few elements, but yeah. Well, I mean, that's that's not really something we can complain about that much. Um, nobody expects you to go into just did. and immediately just understand did. what's happening. Again. Um, but it, it, the problem is that it doesn't really seem to have... There's yeah, uh, okay. There's logs. there's yeah yeah. I, I love that. There's audio logs in this game. Totally not. Somebody Bioshock. had a really good point in the comments, and you can go ahead and take credit for this because I hadn't thought of this. But why don't you, if you're really afraid of being discredited, why don't you just take this audio log and give it to somebody? Yes, yes. It creates this huge plot hole of not a plot hole of what other people are doing, but hey, why am I so stupid? 
I, I think gameplay wise, it, it does borrow from Thief, but I think it borrows as much from Deus Ex as it borrows from Thief. I think it's yeah. The lethal parts of it are really interested in emergent play and having different mechanics play off of one another, but then if you're playing a non-lethal playthrough, it's very much interested in stealth and sort of minimizing any sort of emergent mechanics. It's very much this, stick to the shadows, occasionally take a guy out, etc. Okay, well, yeah, it's that. true. I mean, Thief, if you are just going through and killing people, you are definitely playing Thief wrong. This game is mechanically designed to be valid either way, and I think most people oh. agree that it's more fun when you're going full lethal. Maybe yeah, valid is... either way, but really fucking boring if you take a low chaos route. And absolutely, yeah, non-lethal is kind of boring. And I would oh, like I probably don't want to get into it now, but that's an interesting question as to why that is. Because really, no different than thief, you're just sneaking around and knocking dudes out. Well, well, to get into it now, I, I, <laughs> to completely ignore your complaint, um, I, I think um, the answer is that the mechanics don't really... You, you have such an easy time taking guys out when you're found, where Thief, there's a tension, where if, yes. if a guy is coming towards you and he might see you, you tense up. You don't know, because if he sees you, he could kill you, he could trigger an alarm, any number of things that could spell doom for you are coming down on you if he sees you. Here, it's right. like, the guy sees you and you're like, oh crap, take down, and then you've, you've solved your problem. He is dead. I also right, felt that it was a lot easier in Thief to take the option of not knocking people out. And just going around and, you know, doing stuff behind the scenes. In this game, it always felt like it's, it's pushing you to, like, either slip guards' throats or choke them out. Right? Otherwise, it's right, just going to be hugely difficult. Them. Yeah, sneaking past them is not a... Yeah, Thief is a choice between sneak or knockout. And knockout was the more challenging, but saved you some headaches later. And in this one, it's kill or knockout. I'll, I'll bet I'm you. I exactly remember what right. the That's damn the key difference. Controls are. I got used to Far Cry 3. I keep trying to <laughs> press Q to to choke guy. One of the most annoying things about choking dudes out is if you accidentally let go of Q, you have you failed at choking away. a dude out. Yeah, yeah I like that. I I like that. That if you botch it, you you botch it. I also like how they do it. The guard will, if, um. It just whip his head back and smash you in the nose with the back of his head. I the first time that happened, I was like, "All right, fair's fair. That's pretty cool." The problem is, I start thinking it's modal, and it's not modal. You have to hold it down the entire time until that little meter is full. You could be at 99%, and he could be virtually unconscious. But if you let go of the button, you just push him away, and you've just got a very angry guard. Oh man. That's true.